In early June, two weeks before I began to harvest my first crop of lettuce in mid-June, I decided to sow another batch of lettuce in cups to have them ready to go in the ground and succeed the first batch as summer weather approached. Lettuce prefers cool weather, so growing it in summer can be a challenge. I do have a tested and true variety that performs well during summer heat and that is the green salad bowl variety. Lettuce is synonymous with salad and people have been growing it for millennia. Lettuce was cultivated in ancient Egypt, less as a salad and more as an aphrodisiac. It was also cultivated for oil extracted from the seeds. The Greeks and Romans subsequently also grew and enjoyed lettuce, although they generally cooked it and served it with vinegar and oil. They also gave lettuce its name, lactuca, which means milky, referring to the milky sap. It was subsequently cultivated and selected for larger, more tender leaves with a sweeter taste, and that is how we get our modern salad lettuces we eat raw. I filled up my pre-drilled repurposed teacups with potting soil and sprinkled several lettuce seeds on the surface. I want them to grow into clumps like I had done in the previous batch, so I could harvest them as cut and come again salad grains. The next thing I need to do is to find a spot here in the house where they'll thrive. I do happen to have large windows that are more south facing and that means there is enough light for, for light especially to grow during the summer. I don't want to put them outside at this point because it will just be harder to keep them watered. It's going to be too, too much sun and too much heat for them. Inside the house I think it's going to be the perfect uh, right temperatures right conditions for them to grow into seedlings so that as soon as I have a bed ready or space available in the beds that I already have, then I can transplant them and continue the cycle. I tamped down the seeds so that they would get into contact with the soil. Lettuce germinates better if exposed to light, so it is important not to bury the seeds into the soil. I then water them liberally to ensure germination. I later discovered that the potting soil I was using was not ideal and happened to be too heavy with poor water retention. Getting a good seed starting mix is always the best option. Although I've had success in the past growing in 100% homemade compost that is well aged, I decided to place the cups near a sunny window in a second story bedroom. It is a bay window that faces southwest and thus has plenty of sunlight throughout the day. I was hoping they would germinate quickly since temperatures inside the house were around a steady 75 degrees this time of the year. It's been only two days since I sown the second batch of lettuce seeds and I see promising signs. Actually I see full on sprouting. Let's go take a look. Almost all the seeds appear to have germinated but I wasn't sure about the light situation as I looked closer. While obviously I didn't count them, I think basically all the seeds have sprouted and they look nice. They might be slightly um, leggy. I'm not sure if this window is providing as much light as they need. Perhaps if I raise it up a bit, it will be a better thing because that way they get closer to the to the sun rays. I think I'll do that. But one of the reasons why it grew so fast for even lettuce is because I, I have the room without air conditioning and the temperature is around 70 to 80 degrees. So that's perfect temperature for seeds to sprout very quickly. If it goes above that, it can become a problem goes below that it can become a problem. Not so much for lettuce because lettuce is a bit of a cool weather crop but even even lettuce will respond to a little bit higher temperatures in the 70s range. 70s is the perfect range to sprout almost all seeds. The main goal of starting seeds indoors is to get faster growing stout plantlets that can better withstand the elements and potential pests when finally planted in the ground. To accomplish that, perfect temperature, moisture level, and light exposure need to be achieved. Of all of these, getting the right amount of light 
be it natural sunlight or artificial light, is the most crucial element for success or failure. If you have been following the channel for some time, you have seen me grow seedlings indoors under fluorescent lights that are kept 1 to 3 inches away from the leaves. I believe using fluorescent or LED lights is still the best option. I just wanted to experiment using only natural light this time, partially to show you how much of a struggle it can be. I'll be back right after this commercial to show what happened to these seedlings. Even with the best of conditions, like having a south facing bay window, growing seedlings indoors using only natural light can be a problem. A real greenhouse would be the next best thing. Any setup that falls short of this is going to need extra artificial light. Just remember never to use a light source that emits heat, like incandescent or halogen. I tried to grow the lettuce seedlings indoors without using any artificial light. Contrary to all my previous knowledge and experience, I just wanted to make sure and see what happens. And obviously what's happening is that it's doing exactly what I expected. It's growing leggy and they're not strong seedlings. This is part of the reason why you should not grow indoors seedlings without some additional light. Because I got into this um, new place and I'm trying to adapt and see things and since I do have a bay window that's turned towards the southwest it should in theory have enough light but in actual fact there isn't. It's good for tropical plants, it's perfect for tropical plants but for vegetables they need intense light. So I'm going to be moving these down to the porch where it's still sheltered a bit. It's slightly on the shade side, but there is an incredible more amount of light, of bounce light, or in some direct light, depending on the time of the day, in the porch than even here. That just goes to show how important it is to provide adequate sunlight to your seedlings. If you don't, you're setting up yourself for failure later on. And it goes without saying that these are lettuce seeds that can deal with a bit of partial shade. Imagine how much hungrier for light heat loving fruiting plants like tomatoes or peppers would be if attempted to be raised indoors without the aid of artificial light. There was one caveat to my southwest facing bay window. There is a large tree almost 40 feet away from it that while it doesn't block the sun it can filter it for a few hours when it is full of leaves. If the solar path was completely without obstruction for the entire day, it may have been a different story. About a week later, I decided to get these seedlings in the ground because they were struggling a bit, competing against each other and would benefit with the extra leg room in the raised bed. I'm planting the second batch of lettuces of this year in this new location. I've prepared a bed to plant them in. It's a third bed in the series of protected cages in this veggie garden or, or potager if you want to be more precise since I'm trying to give it a bit of a French feel to the whole um, area. So I'm planting them. I've already sown them as I've shown previously in the, these cups and they're ready to go into the ground. I'm doing it just like I did last time with little mounds of lettuce that I'll eat as cut and come again. And they'll be spaced about six inches apart. I, the thing I like the most about lettuce is how quickly it grows and how well it responds to both watering and fertilizing. If you provide both things and you have adequate sun exposure, it doesn't have to be too much. And I'm thinking maybe there's even a bit too much summer heat on this bed. I'll see how they progress. But if you provide those things, they grow well. Of course, lettuces, the greatest issue with them is keeping them cool and watered so that they don't bolt so fast and keeping them from such intense um, sunlight that they might bolt. This variety, I've known from past experiences that it's the best one to resist summer heat. So that's why I chose it. Later on in the season, I'll be growing other varieties also. In my opinion, lettuce is one of the easiest crops to grow. 
because you can control the environment and since it grows fast you're able to ensure that you get something as a return obviously radish is probably the easiest one if you plant it in the right time but I think lettuce can be a little bit more forgiving if you know how to choose the right variety for the right time of year. Well, for here, what I've done is I've prepared this bed. Um, I'm slowly building these beds to accommodate my the needs for greens, and I have to enclose them because of groundhog and pro possibly deer that roam the area. So. I'm not doing it all at once because it's sort of labor intensive to do and by doing it slowly I can pace myself and make sure that I don't just get the spring fever of putting a garden in and then forget about it. The I think one of the most important things we need to develop as we gain experience in gardening is patience and being able to sustain effort for longer and not just having that spring fever where you want to till all the the land and put all your crops in and then let things go and most likely by then in summer you've forgotten about it or the pest pressures have gotten too big or you have a glut of harvest you don't know what to do with if you learn to stagger plantings and plant what you need and take care of what you have and plant the right scale that you need, you'll be more successful in the long term and you'll have more produce, so it'll make more sense. You'll have a steady supply of produce. Even now, it's the first year I'm planting, I've already noticed that I have a good stream of greens every day that I can rely upon to, for my meals. And that way I'm saving a lot of money considering that if I were to buy these things in an organic market, I'll be paying a pretty penny every week. But by growing them myself, obviously, I save. And I'm not just getting organic, I'm getting beyond organic because I'm not even putting any kind of pesticides currently in not even organic pesticides or herbicides. I'm doing it all by hand. And I've noticed that if you take care of your soil right and you take care of your ecosystem, you might not have 100% perfect produce always, but you'll have what's enough and what's good.